Well, I'm back over here at the sawmill. Uh, I said I was going to do a little short video of the project I was going to do on that. Uh, oops, a little sneak peek there. Wonder if anybody noticed anything there. So, shame on me. When I built this thing, I should have did it from the get go. So, oops, another sneak peek. I don't know if anybody's seen it or not, but anyway, right there it is. White used to be on here. Now it's got a big yellow one on there where I can take off my, I'm really blind glasses and do it without them now, I believe. Yeah. Looking over top of my glasses and I can see that scale just plain as day. I don't know if anybody noticed whenever I'd adjust the sawmill, I'd lean out and look sideways because it used to be on my upright tubing on this side running up through here. And so I took that off, made this little piece of metal up so I could stick that thing to it. Got it adjusted and made that little bracket. Cut that out a little piece of sheet metal. Cut a slot in it, two bolts so I can adjust it. So I'm just like a kid in a candy store, I tell you. And one thing I did do, I set it so that the top of my magnet strip is top dead even with the flush of that metal. And then that way, if I'm running or something for some reason, this thing decides it wants to slide down or something, I can just glance up and know where it's supposed to be in case it does drop. So, there's one thing done. And I did order another blade, or another belt, excuse me, for this thing, two inches shorter than what I've been running. And it's a, a Gates belt. It won't have the ribs in it. it used to have a six and a quarter inch pulley here and this is a little less right at five and seven sixteenths so it's gonna slow my meal down a little but i'm hoping with the gates belt that it'll actually if it sticks up like this i'm a five and three quarter i'll still be running like 4800 feet per per minute but i've been breaking these blades so bad and i've been getting this what I call flutter, where my blade sitting there and doing that all the time, even down here at the bottom. And running the big pulley and the belt when it came off, because I really couldn't get it tight with my tensioner here. So I was going to step back to a smaller pulley here and a shorter belt to see if maybe I can get it tighter here. Plus, this will be lower here. Now, as it comes off my driven pulley over there, it will actually be lower, and hopefully that flutter won't get to it. If I still get flutter, then I will probably upgrade this to a better pulley. And I'm kicking around the idea now of putting an electric clutch pulley right here. And going ahead and putting a battery on the mill. I do have electric start on the motor, so... I can just put a battery on it to run my clutch and to start the motor with. And then I could put a really good idler here that I could actually have a push bolt and draw my belt up tight, banjo tight, or the way the belt should be tight to try to get rid of some of this flutter and see if that's causing my blades to break. So... I'm gonna try this. I got the belt over there. It came the other day. I just haven't had a chance to get over here. So if it works, then I'll do a video on that. And if not, I'm gonna keep on working on this thing and try to keep from breaking so many blades. I don't know if that's it, if I'm over tighten it. And another project I might do is I'm gonna try to create my own little blade tensioner. I've been doing a lot of research on how much these blades should stretch when they're tight and I already have a couple dial indicators so I might make a little blade tensioner gauge up and see if that solves my problems if it does I'll do a video on that and it's relatively simple and cheap 
and to do then I'll do a video on how I made that thing that way if other people want to make one they can so I appreciate y'all watching give it a thumbs up if you like it subscribe if you haven't and if you have I appreciate it and y'all have a wonderful evening